We're good to go. Hello and welcome to Tier 1's race at Circuit of the Americas. This is Contest of Speed with you. I'm Perry the Dog alongside Mitch. I'm on for another week of Tier 1 racing. And Mitch, it's been an eventful Tier 3 and Tier 2 races at Circuit of the Americas. Can Tier 1 live up to the hype that was uh, the past couple of races? Oh, I'm sure these guys can pull it off. Uh, last year's fantastic race um, between LEGO Minecraft and Alta Kier at uh, the circuits of America. So I expect another repeat from last year. That's uh, pretty much our title contention right now between Al Altakir and and um, Lego Minecraft. Right now, Lego holding on to an eight-point lead after he uh, gave away the victory with uh, penalties at Mexico, I believe. So after the facts. Um, Al comes away with the win, and now just three races left. Can Lego hold on for the championship, or will Al repeat as Tier 1 champion? Uh, right now, out of the gates, uh, all the drivers on their outlap at the moment, and it looks like, for the most part, everybody on softs except for Two Spell and Kanzo. Yeah, with Hans Kanzo going on that hard tire, it makes me wonder, is he going to try to start on the medium tire tonight? It is interesting, going the harder tire strategy, maybe trying to hope for a safety car starting on the harder tire. We'll find out in just a moment. So trying to pull the stream up just to see who you have up right now. Oh, I'm on board right now with Thomas as he's the uh, first car across the line, I believe, uh, to start his first flying lap. Thomas, of course, uh, did, did a little bit of practice this week with Thomas around this track, and he seemed to have quite a bit of pace and also kept his tires under temperature through this first stint uh, in that practice, which, again, will come in handy once... Uh, the tires start to go about three or four laps into the session. Let's see, he makes his way down the back stretch at the moment. Only 13 drivers in the lobby tonight. Of course, so would have been a couple of uh, at least one qualifying uh, session ban would have been for Dougie, but he's not here, so they'll have to serve that whenever he is back. Uh, yeah. Watch the rest. Yeah, watch just the rest of this lap, Mitch. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to state that uh, Dougie is no longer in the uh, the league as of now, so he will not be having to serve okay. the, uh, so the penalty. There's, there's there's an update that uh, did not know, so that helps. Thomas will come across the line first with a 131.9, a pretty solid lap for him, but not as good as Al, who sets a 130.7. That's a outstanding lap time on a green track for Al Al Takir. Right yeah, on board. would expect Two these guys. The expect these guys to be probably in the low 130s by the end of the t end of this session's over with. And Al has already eclipsed the 130 mark. Lego came across with a 131.1, so already four tenths of a second behind Al, but of course one thing that Al was saying in the chat before the race was how to keep the tires to cool, and he might have maybe a little bit too aggressive of a setup at the start, and we'll see if Lego can make some ground up later in that opening stint as Calzo comes across the line, goes fifth fastest at a 131.5, so a pretty spread out opening run, first through six, a 1.2 second gap through that course an opening run they should have time to do at least two more yeah they'll have plenty of time to be able to get 
at least three runs in total over the session. Riding on board to spell the lone runner in this qualifying so far on the medium tire. I don't know if he's... We'll jump over to Fruitful as he just started his flying lap on the soft tires. Two spell back in P10, of course, predictable on the medium tire. Fruitful, of course, uh, looking back, won, at least won the race. Uh, not sure if it was penalties. I didn't go back and watch the race, but Fruitful did take the win in Tier 1 last year around Coda. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember the only thing I really remember from the, the Tier 1 race at Coda last year was Lego and Altic here battling as hard as they were. It was a difficult track to get by, and... We saw in Tier 3 and Tier 2 penalties make a huge difference at the end as that might have been an invalidation from Fruitful. Took a good chunk out of that curving on the entrance to Sector 3. Little stadium, stadium section here at Circuit of the Americas. And Mitch, it's really a fun one to drive in terms of hitting marks and they're all sweeping corners. Uh, yeah, I mean, Circuit of the Americas for me has always been one of the harder tracks for me it just doesn't suit my driving style which is kind of odd it's just a uh, people tell me it's a rhythm track but I can't find any type of a rhythm while driving the track uh, just every sector is completely different from each other so uh, it's gonna be you know who can keep the penalties down who can keep the tire temps down um, I didn't really run into an issue yesterday with tire temps but I found myself just stuck Absolutely stuck in traffic. Uh, I had a terrible start and uh, trying to work your way back up through the field was really hard. Um, and it just, especially if you get stuck in a DRS train, it just makes it nearly impossible to get by. A lot of drivers now out on their second warm up lap. Uh, we do have Raikkonen 34 Kimi back um, after I believe he was banned for a little bit. So now back up in Tier 1, going to be the teammate of Al Altic here to try to keep Mercedes in the constructor's hunt. Um, right now, I th do think they need to outscore the racing points by about 30 points in the constructor's standings to even make it a fight. They're currently... Yeah, currently 96 points back. I'm not sure. I actually don't think they can make up that much ground. Actually, yes, they, they're mathematically in it, but they've got to be within 88 points uh, going into the last two races. So they still have a chance, but they do need to outscore the racing points today, and then we'll really have to outscore them the next two races. Yeah, it's one of those uh, not technically eliminated from contention, but... A I lot mean, of ground to make up. Yeah, they, they would they would need racing points probably to double DNF. Yeah, and the chances that are very races. yeah, it's very no. highly unlikely to have two of the top drivers in this tier uh, both wreck out. We'll see what kind of pace Raikkonen has compared to his teammate Al, and seen his name in open lobbies, but haven't really seen what he does. Maybe gets a little bit of traffic here. Doesn't get any help from his teammate. Yeah, it's an unfortunate spot to catch traffic. Uh, they're trying to get out of your way, and you're just getting dirty air off them. It makes for a horrendous uh, third sector if you get caught in any type of traffic during your qualifying lap. And I'm sure he was yes. hindered a little bit, but he does go sixth fastest on his first lap out. Still about eight or nine minutes left. I know the clock that you see on your screen says eight, but... Usually there's a glitch and you have a little bit more time than what is shown, so keep yeah. that in the back of your mind. I would expect probably 30 seconds is the difference, uh, I think is kind of what we've kind of determined through this glitch. Um, so what you see is to add 30 seconds, and that's probably what the real drivers are seeing on screen. Let's see if Al can improve his second run, of course. Pretty nice cushion at the moment for 
Oh, he's getting a toe from his teammate uh, Raikkonen down the back straight. This is definitely going to help him improve his lap time here. As Raikkonen gets out of the way midway down the straight, but yeah, you're right out. We'll get maybe gain it two more tenths at least just with the draft. It's just that powerful around this track. Of course, he got it at the right point too, where it was just straight on the back stretch. Uh, of course, if you're following someone through sectors one and three, there's so much dirty air you lose pretty much all the time you gain with the draft and with DRS. Coming around a wide exit on the second to last corner, uh, similar to the IndyCar line, not, not as blatant, if you will, around here, as he does improve to a 130.6, so he adds on, what, another tenth? A little bit over a tenth. He improves by Lego is coming into the pits. If J. Ferro Roche has now put himself ahead of his teammate um, by a tenth, so. Yeah, Lego must have invalidated there and just decided to abort the lap. And very easily can be done in the first sector. Yep, Fruitful is starting, or currently on his. A uh, little bit later of a stint than the rest, so currently on his second run. It's incredible what these cars can do carrying that much speed through the end of the S's here, Circuit of the Americas. Uh, almost debatable which gear you can take it in fifth or sixth. And I'm thinking he must have invalidated as he's completely backed out of this run. Yeah. Jump on board with Tuspel, who's making his first attempt on the soft tire. A 132.2 that lap. So, not the best of the laps. I think Tuspel would have wanted maybe, late, uh, you know, not pushing as hard back in P11, trying to start on the alternate strategy. Konzo as well, starting his first run on the soft tire after running a few laps on the hards. Let's see that we have a little bit different of a name for Calzo, LR Calzo 210. Uh, the Scottish brothers in the Renault, who constructor-wise too, they're in a tight battle with the Toro Rosso team, you know, four points back from Toro Rosso. So I don't know if we have any Toro Rosso, so they should overtake um, the second Red Bull team for P4 in the Constructors Championships and looking down the line as well, of course, Lego and Al separated by eight points at the top. Then you've got Fruitful with 214 points in third, pretty much all by himself. And then you have Jay Roche, Calzo at 117, a deadlock for fourth place. So uh, it is a close battle in the midfield as Calzo comes across and does not improve, must have invalidated. So. Yeah, definitely invalidated his lap at some point. Jump over to Officer Juan, who is on his second attempt on the uh, soft tire. Um, down Looks into like he's... After two? Yeah, that's where he's at. This is a decent run so far for Officer Juan. Of course, there's still time to set another run for a lot of these guys, but at the moment, P5 would be a great start for Officer Juan. Always got a root full of, for the Red Bull reason, the different tiers. <laughs> I would do the same with the Alpha teams, but uh, Alpha no driver today. Yeah, the one, el the lone Alpha driver uh, is out for tonight's race. Man, looking directly into that sun and Officer One late dive into the pits. That was one thing that I really right. noticed uh, that would hinder my lap times was coming down the hill uh, before the final corner is it's completely blind. You can't see anything. Yeah, it's really easy to miss a breaking point and then compromising your lap a few tenths just in the final turn. Oh, yeah, I was that's I was my problem was I was stopping too soon because I didn't want to overshoot the corner, uh, but I found myself losing time because of that. Yeah, it looks like Raikkonen is backed off. He's not using any URS at the moment, so 
might be just an out lap or maybe trying to do an extra lap on the sauce before going but around here the tire degradation is so high that you don't want to do that extra lap on the softs is one you'll have to pit too early and probably throw on the hards and two you're not going to go any faster yeah it's right you're now. just going to lose time if you have to make a second run at it on the soft tire right now jamie trying to improve out of 12th place i mean just barely in the 132s at the moment probably set at the beginning of the session should improve so he'll be running up on the back of Al, who will be starting his final flying lap. Comes across, opens the DRS, and goes faster down to a 132 flat P10 at the moment. Up to the top of the order we go with Al, who's improved once from a 137 to a 130.6. And in my opinion, looking to cruise to a pole position so far the way this qualifying session has gone. Only catch up on any traffic. Might get a little bit of traffic with a McLaren ahead of him, or not really too close. Yeah, looking ahead of him, he's got about three cars ahead of him, so that's gonna... Hopefully they get out of his way and don't cost him any time. We jump on board with him as he goes through the uh, final sector. He's got a little bit of dirty air from T-Spell. Around the outside he goes. Across the line, does improve even more, 130.5. Lego currently is backed off on his lap, so he did Jump just set one for the yeah, 130.9. Teammate now getting a draft, maybe some dirty air through the first sector, but now we'll have draft into the back stretch. Konza comes across the line, does not improve, so he might go for the alternate strategy back in P13. Oh, a terrible camera angle just shows me the rear tire. Alright, on board now, late on the brakes, but a good entrance into that corner and a good exit. Don't know whether to quite to call that a hairpin or not. Not quite. Yeah, uh, 90 degree. If not, a little bit more. Can he get past his teammate Lego? Hard on the brakes in the final corner, and does improve to go P1. Unbelievable. Pulled that one out of his hat. Wow. So Jay Roche takes the top spot from Al with a 130.5. Just got him by less than three hundredths of a second. Yeah, that was a great lap from him. You could just tell it was a very clean lap. This fool does not improve. Officer One, Officer One jumps to P5 and missed out on P4 for Fruitful by it's that seven thousandths of a second for P4. That's our qualifying over. As everybody has, Legos went in the pits and then Altkir's already finished with his qualifying as he limps his Mercedes to try not to get any temperature in those tires to pit lane. Yeah, I can really, I can say I did not expect uh, Jay Fouché, uh to uh, jump. I expected him to probably jump his teammate because he was less than a tenth and a half off of him, but I wasn't expecting him to put in a cl that clean of a lap um, to take pole tonight at Coda. Now Al finds himself in a racing point sandwich, at least on the on the grid. It'll. Gives, I think, gives Lego a bit of a chance to possibly make a move from P3 into turn one, be a little bit more aggressive than he 
usually could, knowing that your teammate's ahead in P1. Of course, rest of the grid, Thomas down at P7, Calzo P8, J Ghost P9. Jamie takes up the top 10, and then simply two spell and Conzo round out the order. Very close qualifying for P1 and P2. Uh, 28 thousandths, not much of a gap, and just how impressive is that time? A 130.5 around Circuit of the Americas. I can only do that in time trial. I, I couldn't even do that. No, that's right, because my pass system that is a 30.8 or 30.9. So we'll get ready to grind it out, 50% race, around Circuit of the Americas in Tier 1. Al has a spot on his, team, on, uh, his points rival, Lego, but trails by just 8 points. And Roche trying to get a win here around Circuit of the Americas and secure P4 and the Drivers Championship and secure a Racing Point Constructors Championship. Yeah, if they're, if they're trying to, I mean, obviously uh, Al wants, or Lego wants to get back up top, but as the Racing Points have pointed out most of the season, they, uh, they, they definitely want that Constructors Championship wrapped up. As we Let's wait. See if anybody... Yep. See if anybody readies up as usual. I think it happens pretty much every single time that somebody accidentally presses X after setting their strategy. If there's any of the tiers that go the longest, it's most of the time tier one. They seem to, uh, <laughs> they know better. The, other, the lower tiers are a little trigger happy. We all tend to hit the X button at some point. I feel like eat the cookie if he's in chat. That's probably his uh, go-to <laughs> tier three. Oh, and Raikkonen and is, is the first one. Raikkonen. <laughs> Not surprising, considering that this is his first race back. Of course, uh, if you're joining us for one of the first times, of course, catch. Uh, Tier 3 next Monday, they uh, head to Brazil Interlagos as they uh, finish up their season with uh, next to last race of the year. And of course, Tier 2 on Tuesday nights, that battle uh, solid last night with Matrix taking it with some penalties. It was the, the two-stop drive Rich. that was... Uh, I what Matrix did yesterday was just class. He was a class of his own. Uh, it just shows how much he's improved um, since joining Contest of Speed. Um, but it also just shows his pace and what, you know, putting in the time and the effort practicing can bring. Um, obviously, you need the little bit of, you, you need the talent, you need the, uh, the racecraft, but... Uh, Matrix has got all that stuff dialed in, and he's definitely improving. Um, as we'll it'll be fun to watch him in uh, Tier 1 next year. It should have Matrix. Uh, should be Ricky as well. We'll see if he can live up to the task of racing in Tier 1. Rumor is that he might take a year off, and I think that would just be a complete shame. I'd love to see what you could push Ricky to the limit and see what he could, could compete up in Tier 1. You find it a bit interesting. These guys are waving back and forth, weaving back and forth on the backstretch. Uh, Al and Jay. I don't know if that's the right strategy to go with. Uh, well, I heat the tires. Well, it, it is cloud covered, so you know their tires aren't going to be uh, heating up as much as you need. Um, in as I found out yesterday. I weaved a little bit in the third sector, and I just couldn't get the tires up to temp, and off the line, I just sat there and spun. So, you definitely at least need the rears heated up to get hooked up off the line.
Of course, uh, Mitch reminding uh, us uh, what we're planning on doing lap 19 before we get the fiber lights. Oh yeah, uh, lap 19, we will be taking a moment of silence for the F2 driver, Antonio Herbert, who uh, passed away terribly at Belgium this past uh, weekend. Um, so yeah, lap 19, if we're going to go silent. We'll let you listen to the cars, uh, just in remembrance of him. So uh, nothing will be go you know, nothing wrong with the audio or anything on lap 19, just so everybody watching uh, understand what's going on. I thought we'd definitely like to mention that before a race. And of course, we'd like to keep the Uber family in our prayers. Uh, definitely a difficult time for all of racing, but especially for his uh, loved ones. As here we go get on a brighter note we'll have racing around the circuit of the americas today for tier one here we go four red lights five red lights and away we go roche off to a little bit of a slow start on the inside is al he will dive him and get side by side into turn one and Al with the preferred line runs way wide that'll shove Roche out of the way as Lego spins off and he's down the order Lego has crashed come up collided with Kimmy and now runs into Kimmy once again and Raikkonen so Lego without a front wing back in P14 his race for the win at least is looks like it's about over meanwhile after all that fruitful jumps up to second place a brilliant start for the Ferrari drivers following Al at the moment but Al from P2 got a great run off the line over Roche and able to make the move stick. Yeah, I'm very interested in what what transpired when it came to the other Merc and uh, Lego as they went into um, turn one and then down the hill. I, one of the cars could have lost the rear end causing the issue, um, but I'm sure at some point we will find out within the next day or so what happens and he's got a steep hill to climb now as at the moment Al has taken the points lead as they run at the moment of course Lego should be able to make some places up um, but we'll see how this race turns out so Roche after setting the pole now back in P3 finding himself about a half second behind fruitful for the second spot and now starting to pull a little bit of a gap across Fruitful as he'll lead lap number one. It says Fruitful has set the uh, fastest lap, so maybe Al jumped the start? Uh, he probably took either a warning at some point for cutting the track, so it'll avoid his uh, fastest lap at the time. Okay, yeah, I, I think that might have been into turn one when he ran wide, ran Roche off the track. Up, uh, further down the lineup, of course, Officer Juan is in P4. A good start out of him. Thomas P6, Calzo P5, Jamie back in P7. As Raikkonen and Lego both lost their front wing, are now in the pits. And let's see, Lego's put on the hard tire, so he's probably going to try to go the rest of the race without stopping. Raikkonen on the mediums. Yeah, Raikkonen is probably going to try to pull a little bit of what Matrix did last night, just do two stints on the medium tire. Lego's tires will be fine to go to the end on the hard compound. Um, at least from my experience just this past, you know, yesterday racing, um, he'll jump on board simply as he's reeling in uh, the other McLaren as he's stuck in between both the Orange Boys at this time. But, yeah, back to what I was saying, uh... The thing I noticed with the medium tire, just throughout the practice sessions that I've done this week, uh, it it lasts forever. Now it just depends on tire dag as well, you know, how much you're heating those tires up. Um, but in my experience, I mean, I would have been probably, you pit on like lap five or six and it would have been fine on the medium tire. Um, but you won't see that. I mean, the soft runners at the top, they'll pit anywhere between probably lap eight and lap 10. Uh, I think if you go any longer than 10, you, you've you gone too far. This, but the undercut's probably good for at least two seconds, I believe, around here, so. As right now, Al starting to pull ahead his gap now one second. It'll be interesting to see if Fruitful is close enough to get DRS down the backstretch. I don't think he will be. But we'll have to deal with... Jay Roche, who's 
within seven tenths, and yeah, he will have DRS on Fruitful. So already Al has broken the DRS chain back to second. They spread out, of course, closer battle and a DRS train in the midfield from about sixth place on back. And yeah, we'll jump probably, on it is difficult as simply gets into the back of two spell. Simply just got into the back of two spell. Two spell went around, simply stays behind two spell, but they both lose out in a couple positions. I believe Dougie and uh, Jay Ghost came through that uh, incident as well. So unfortunate for two spell to get spun in the back, and I think Simply would probably have some wing damage from that. If he's lucky, he doesn't, but just, I think, a little bit too aggressive of a move coming out of the back stretch and right. cost him some time. Uh, he's I, staying out, so... Yeah, yeah I, I think he's clear. I kind of saw a, a good look of his front wing. I think the, uh... He somehow avoided that damage, so... Yeah, the gap at the front here is just kind of... Fruitful has, uh... He's taken some time out of Al here. Um... I wonder if Al's tires are starting to have the issue that he was complaining about earlier in the chats today. Um, tires just starting to overheat. And... I feel like Al pulls the gap up through the first sector, but then the third sector, Fruitful, might be running more downforce and can catch back up through the slower corners of sector three. Yeah, very well could be, because I do see now, as soon as I said that, he, what, he opened it back up three tenths, so... Right now, the top four all without DRS. Calzo has DRS on Officer Juan. He's currently sitting at a solid fourth place finish. Uh, fourth place position, I should say. Gains a little bit of time and will ride behind Officer Juan into the stadium third sector. Oh, and Officer Juan, or not Officer Juan, well, I guess it's Officer Juan's teammate, Jamie 1S, is. Uh gone deep and ran into the back of the uh, second Ferrari of Thomas. Um, I wonder if he received any wing damage from that or not. I didn't see anything. Yeah, he's definitely got damage on the right-hand side now. He is missing that yep. end plate, so that will cost him some time. At this point, you might as well just pit, throw the medium, or uh, well, this yeah, time he's gonna he's gonna hard. Wide. Now he's going to have to wait for everybody to go through. Yeah, so he lost quite a bit of time with that. And now we'll yeah, come into the pits from 12th, so maybe another spot that Lego will get. He's 8 seconds behind Raikkonen and now is, that really shows you how much slower the hard tire is. Oh, two spell goes deep into the back of his teammate while trying to overtake Dougie, uh, who apparently joined the lobby um, during qualifying. So yeah. I don't know if what my information was wrong or not quite sure. We'll find know. out. I'll find out at the end of this race. Yeah, uh, two spell is missing a right end plate, so we should see two spell in at the end of this lap. Of course, currently holding up Conzo and simply. Conzo's gonna make a dive Conzo. before he even gets into the back straight. DRS. Probably the best thing he can do. Uh, he's still gonna get yep. DRS. We get the move done. Move on from the car that you know probably has some type of damage. Two spell goes with the switchback though, and we'll have the inside. Now simply is drafting, and they're gonna. Force it three wide. Nope, simply thinks better of it and decides to back off. So two spell. I will say that's a strong defend at the moment as Conso now will lunge ahead, but he won't have the pass made. Two spell hangs around on the outside. That'll turn into the inside. And two spell fights back. That's surprising from two spell considering that he is missing that wing damage to do that well. But now on the fast right hander, he will lose that spot to Conzo. Yeah, he's as, missing uh, that, that down, run and that, that right front end plate on that wing. So going through that corner, there's just there's nothing to, to seal that car down to the track. Uh, His teammate heads into the pits, though. Two spell forced to stay out. And we'll jump back Let's up see. here to the, uh, the Renault of Cal uh, Calzo. He's, he is all over the back of Officer Juan now. Now, yeah, Officer Juan lost about more ground to Jay Roche ahead of him now, about two seconds, and Calzo catching back up, although a good run from Officer Juan towards the back stretch. 
And with DRS's Calzo, he's going to have quite a bit of ERS as well to burn. He's going to go hot lap down the back stretch, see if he can catch Officer Juan. Coming into the braking zone, still well behind the Red Bull. I'll have to stay put in P4. Jump over to Simply as he's making a move down the back straight on to Spell. And yeah, he had to move over before the, the corner. It's worth noticing that the Jagos and Jamie on the hard tire, and they came out well in front of Lego in Raikkonen. So just by staying out those laps and not having to pit early, it's really uh, all that time still on the soft with some life really helped them out in terms of uh, going the rest of the way. Oh, absolutely. It's, you know, when you take as bad a wing damage as Lego had to take on the first lap, uh, you have no wing whatsoever, and it just forces you to, you know, you're you're gonna pit but it takes forever to get around the track so you're just losing time the whole time do you spell in for a wing change and throws on the hard tires as we'll look at calzo still stuck behind officer juan coming through the s's look up front al has pulled out a two two and a half second gap um over fruitful and roche back another two seconds so the front three have really kind of they dispersed themselves out. Officer Juan kind of catching up to Roche now at 1.3 second gap. Maybe waiting to push on those soft tires. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I did say that Fufu was catching Al, and as soon as I said that, they all separated each other. Uh, second and third, though, that's pretty much been a two second gap, but Al's now pulled out, what, a second and a half since. Um, we last talked about the front runners, so and, uh, yeah, they've kind of evened it off, and then Officer Juan has now taken some time out of uh, Jay Frusche, um Roche. So I wonder, you know, if somebody's going to try a big undercut. I mean, my opinion is some of the guys that pitted on the end of this la previous lap, lap seven, or the beginning of it, I should say, uh, they could have went the medium tire at least from my own experience now obviously that's different with everybody else and how they take care of the tires but um anybody now i think that pits it's an easy medium to the end uh type strategy so as he simply come in he's the first of the soft runners to come in for the pits and yes he is uh just like you mentioned just throwing on the medium tire yeah and that's definitely going to give him an advantage especially over the guys that he's racing if he has to race with anybody uh, he's going to come out in clean air. The closest car is Jake Ghost in the McLaren, but he's well clear of him. So for Simply, this is, he could pick up some time here, big time. Uh, the undercut, everything that I've kind of saw, anywhere between two, two and a half, three seconds, you can easily uh, pick up depending on when the car in front of you decides to pit. And I think uh, if I'm pretty much Dougie or Conzo, uh maybe even Thomas, I think you've got to consider coming in just to prevent simply from getting too strong of an undercut. Of course, uh, Calzo as well, still stuck behind Officer Juan. I think that we'll see Calzo in as well, try to undercut Officer Juan and even possibly fruitful, depending on when Al decides the pits. Uh, I don't think we'll see too many people stay out here around this lap. Well, Al will stay out as well as fruitful, so and Jay Roche, so an opportunity for some of these runners, yeah. Yeah, Calzo, is Calzo. he's smartly, he couldn't get past Officer Juan. He was stuck in his DRS, but just couldn't get the, the move done. Um, so I think if you, you know, thinking to himself, he's probably thinking, I can pick up this position if he doesn't pick it just by the undercut. Um, and then Officer Juan will be most likely stuck in the same situation. As I see, uh, Thomas is also pitted. Dougie as well. So let's see if Simply jumps any of these guys um, with if the anything, undercut. He should make up a little bit of time, at least to Dougie. It should be close with Dougie into turn one. Hey, he will jump Dougie. They'll be side by side as they head into turn one. I think Dougie will come out just ahead of him, but Simply with already warmed up medium tires, I think should be able to make a move down the back stretch.
Yeah, he's probably about a lap away from being able to really make a move at Dougie. Well, simply now... That's right, he does already have the warmed up tire, so... Scratch that, he should be able to make a move at some point. Uh, just Dougie's tires are probably right up to temp now, but... Let's see... The camera angles here are horrendous, I shall say. Well, he does make him a little bit of time to Dougie, but not close enough to go for any move. As uh, Fruitful picks up a time penalty. That might very have interesting. Been him coming into the pits. Yeah. yeah, so it might be something that he could have removed, unless it was on. The top four are all into the pits. Oh, and Fruitful, Fruitful put on the hards. Fruitful very puts interesting. On the hards strategy. And then got held as well as the Red Bull was coming in. So Fruitful got held too, and now Roche is right behind him, also on mediums. Meanwhile, here comes Calzo, picked up a spot on Officer 1, and now is right behind Jay Roche for P3. So that one lap, that one lap difference was huge for Calzo to make up time with the undercut. Yeah, just as I predicted, he came out in clean air, got those a right, nice clean lap in. And while those guys are struggling on their, their dead softs, he's able to make up a ton of time jumping Officer Juan. And now he's attached himself to uh, two drivers that had quite a big gap between them before they pitted. Um, Fufu didn't have the best of uh, pit entries, that's for sure. Taking a time penalty, getting held up. Um, and then I'm questioning as to why he went on the hard tire. Um, I don't know if that's his actual strategy can't make the mediums last or if the uh, the game has decided all you are allowed to have is the hard tire and uh, that's what they threw on because I've had that happen a lot in the last week where they're just throwing on the wrong tire even though I have a tire set yeah so meanwhile Al has to be loving it now pulled away to a 4.6 second gap Roche and P3 Calzo catching up now was P5 stuck behind Officer One. Now has a two second gap to Officer One. So, has made things interesting, of course, kind of in a DRS train behind Fruitful and Roche. And Calzo is going to get, he's going to be right back to where he was, where he was stuck behind somebody, couldn't get by him. Uh, at least, unless they're running a uh, very low. Uh... Oh, Fruitful's going for the switchback as. A solid move out of the racing point to come back and catch P2. And I don't think Fruitful, he might be able to be in DRS's backstretch, but with the hard tires on, I don't know how long yeah, he can battle. Yeah, once they get to the third sector, I mean, he's going to be at a huge disadvantage being on that hard tire. In the back of the pack, two spell gets past Jamie for P12. It's worth noting, Dougie uh, joined, of course, didn't have a setup, is doing decently well in P7 and just set the fastest lap of the race. That's impressive with this the uh, baseline setup. Fruitful with a late dive into the turn, not going to be able to make the move stick. Roche hangs it around the outside, and now gets a better exit. Let's go with a helicopter. Can't really just leave it just like this. Yeah, I'm still very Looking interested up. as to why Fufu went on the hard tire. Well, it'll be something, if he does finish on the podium, we can ask him afterwards, or get an answer from him through one of the chats later on tonight. O'Shea sets the fastest lap, 135.2. Of course, had the help of... Well, actually, well, he only had DRS down the front stretch to start the lap, so... Considering he made a pass on that lap as well, it's pretty, pretty nice to see him make the fastest lap with that. But it is five seconds behind Al, and yeah. I think as soon as you see Fruitful lose DRS, Calzo, who had a lot of dirty air, lost about half a second just on the exit of that turn, will probably make his move around Fruitful. Yeah, once. 
it probably it won't be this lap. It will probably be the next lap. Uh, Calzo will really be able to uh, attack Fruitful for that position. Um, yeah, just having that car in front of you that has DRS as well just makes it nearly impossible to get by somebody. Looking back through the field into the end of the backstretch, Dougie gets by Thomas. The Dougie up to P6. Yeah, it makes you think what kind of pace you would have had if uh, you had an actual setup. <laughs> For real. This is worth saying that Jay did have the fastest time in qualifying, so maybe has a little bit more pace than Al, but being so far back, I don't know how much you're going to really catch him. He has a lot of time, though, still only halfway through this race, but hit it on the same lap, have the same age of mediums, so I'm not sure you know, how much of an advantage you can really have. A tire dag is about the only advantage you're going to really get, and even that's pretty easily manageable, in my opinion. Thomas, is he's all about... He, Dougie overtook him on the last lap. He's going to look to try to retake that position down the back straight. I think Calzo's a little bit closer to Fruitful this time. Has a lot of ERS left. About 80% to Fruitful's 30%. Look down the inside, late under the brake, and Calzo will make it stick. They still side by side as Fruitful fights back on the outside. Has the inside line. Calso tries to switch back, but Fruitful blocks that off and now just has to wait behind Fruitful once again. So, a good fight back for Fruitful, though, knowing, you know, you've got a harder tire compound, but still that was a good chance for Calso to get up to the final podium spot and instead has to at least wait behind Fruitful until they get to the front stretch. Yeah, that was very good defense, even though he's on the harder compound, Fruitful was able to you know, hang him, hang it down the uh, the outside, defending, and then that line. When you defend the outside there, it it opens up the next corner. So yeah, you might allow the uh, the person you're racing with to get alongside of you, but once you get to that next corner, you're taking the right hand into a corner where you have the inside line. So uh, great job by Fruitful as he uh, defends off the Renault at least for one more lap. I would expect uh, Calzo here to again make another attack down that straight and hope to uh pull himself a little bit closer down into sh before the hairpin get the better launch and have the move done before you even get to that corner jay goes picks up i believe his second penalty back there of course uh raikkonen's mediums are starting to fall off jay goes has caught him from behind as here comes calzo for the third spot has the move completed and will take P3. Fruitful tries for a little bit of a switchback, but again, all the hard tires, not good enough for an exit. Calzo now will have third place. Yeah, and I expect Calzo at this point uh, to, he'll he'll pull away, he should be able to pull away from Fruitful just by the tire difference. Um, you know, if, really, I don't think Fruitful's tires will ever really be an advantage until the end of the race. And at that point, it's probably gonna be too late. jump on board with Fruitful's t teammate Thomas. He's trying to get back past uh, Dougie, who's in a Haas, who he normally is in a, a Williams, but he did join during the quality session, so and the game did put him in the wrong car. And I think Thomas is quick enough just to stay with Dougie, but I'm not sure he's you know, got the pace to really overtake him. Also kind of low in ERS as well. Both of them are low in ERS, and both of them are losing ground to P5 Officer Juan, who seems to be slowly catching Fruitful now. Yeah, as ever so slightly, uh, Officer Juan is pulling, reeling in Fruitful again.
At this point, you just hope that the drivers kind of can accordion, accordion affect themselves back together here. Different strategies a bit, tire-wise, tire, tire wise, uh, and uh, make for some, some racing. Yeah, it's starting to really just kind of spread itself out. Um, Jake goes stuck behind Raikkonen, and this is one of those tracks where you just, again with DRS, you get usually either stay close enough to continue to get the ER, DRS and uh, continue to stay at least within a second of the car in front of you, or you just get stuck behind somebody for the you know majority of the race, or continue to have back and forth battles. I know that's how the first two tiers played out, and. Really, it is just difficult to break DRS once you get by someone. Yeah, it's hard, and then it's even worse if you've got uh, a line of cars. I mean, I found myself, like I said earlier, I found myself in that same instance where you're just, you're stuck. There's just nowhere to go. You're trying everything you can do to just make a move, but until somebody else makes a mistake, you're pretty much stuck there waiting until, uh, to get by. It's uh, a bit interesting seeing that Lego sets the fastest lap on 14 lap old hards. But at least still take that bonus point away, of course, won't get the bonus point being outside of the top 10. As now we do have yellow flags and it's two spell, I believe he might have lost it. Not quite exactly sure, but Jamie gets by two spell. I think I did see wing damage on the front. Yeah, there's massive wing damage on the front of that McLaren. Uh, not sure where S2 if he just lost it or what happened, but he probably lost it in the S's. As J Ghost is still stuck behind the, uh, the Mercedes of Raikkonen. You think uh, at this point, if Raikkonen does have an extra set of softs, do you try to just throw on the softs for the last eight laps or so? Ah, oh, you definitely could. You should. I mean, time is uh, easily made up, as Matrix showed yesterday's race. Just how much of an advantage being on that fresh soft, um, being a quick driver. So it's a huge advantage when it comes to that kind of stuff. As in the back, Lego gets by two spell, and now two spell will come into the pits. Also, Officer One picks up, I believe that's his first penalty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody at the front is clean, other than Officer One and Fruitful. They both have uh, time penalties as it stands, um, but uh, it doesn't really change the running at this point. This is worth noting too that Dougie, um, his save fuel light is on, so he might have under fueled, which is why he's been able to be so competitive from P6, uh, from you know without having a setup starting at the back. Maybe he's been trying to save fuel the entire race. Now the light goes off, out back on again, so he's probably put in no extra fuel and it's just been back and forth and having enough fuel to make it to the end. Yeah, he probably really underfueled the car. Not having a setup probably affected, you know, the way he would attack this race. And maybe his only advantage that he could think of was to uh, underfuel the car. And fruitful picks up a three-second time penalty as well. I I'm assuming that he'll have the first one probably taken out. Yeah, he got it entering the pits. Yeah, there is a chance that he could have it. And there's just really nothing going on around on the track. Everybody's out, other than Jay Ghost. He's just stayed in the the DRS of uh, Raikkonen and uh... and uh, 
worth mentioning as we start the 19th lap here, just a moment lap of silence for Antoine Hubert uh, passing away with us at the age of 22 from Belgium. So remember him for this 19th lap. Yeah, we'll give him uh, a full moment of silence as they come to the line. As Tuchel completes his 13th lap, uh, worth noting, did have a lot of action that last lap uh, simply into the pits at the end of lap 19. Raikkonen came in and put on sauce, and Lego came in and put on mediums. I think it was a little bit interesting. Lego was close to uh, fighting Jamie for P now 11, and instead comes in to, on the mediums. Yeah, I'm curious as to if he's just at this point try to take that fastest lap off somebody. I'm, I'm sure that's probably what his thoughts was. He probably felt like he couldn't get to the point, so... is fruitful i think starting the real calzo in back in maybe a little bit officer Juan catching as well now a second a little bit over a second back entering the s's on uh, lap 21 of course uh you know probably the last five laps or so the hards will be better than the mediums as thomas picks up a three second penalty yeah as of right now that doesn't hurt thomas but um if he loses any time or maybe picks up more penalties that could potentially hurt him in the end um but yeah as you were saying you know officer one is catching fruitful um but fruitful is starting to catch calzo i'm just wondering <clears throat> what state of tires is uh you know calzo's mediums in is they shouldn't really have an issue but i would expect probably the hard tire being the quicker tire you know the last what handful of laps so um it, it's gonna be interesting it's the uh, going to be a fight for the last podium position. So Al has 
been pulling away. Now six and a half seconds to gap to Roche. And just worth noting that Calzo does have one more lap older mediums than the rest of them. So that might be why he's maybe, I don't know, not pushing as hard. I don't know if he's really losing a lot of time to Fruitful. Maybe he just made a mistake, but um, still not really gaining any time over Fruitful at the moment. Right, I would expect those tires. There is going to be a little bit of a transition. The hard tire will be better at the end of the race. It's just a matter of how much better at that point. And Officer Juan picks up another three seconds, so that will, uh, I believe that's a six total seconds he's gotten at the moment. Yeah. So. He's still clear of Dougie, but it's by about a second, so, you know, as Dougie has to uh, push a little bit harder. Uh, just to get in, you know, cover a second, and he would pick up another position. if As long as he hasn't picked up any penalties along the way as well. At the moment, it had to be just a perfect race for Al. Not only, you know, not getting the pull for probably the first time in a, quite a while, to making the move into turn one to get the lead, and then to run away with this lead, as well as... Uh, have Lego have the issue he had in turn one where he either just lost the back end, went around, or got hit from behind, but either way, just it was a just a terrible race for Lego and a perfect storm for Al. He'll have the points lead and a little bit of a gap now in the driver's championship. Yeah, it's very unfortunate what happened to Lego in into turn one. Um like you said, perfect storm for Al. He's going to get a little bit of a lead over um, Lego. And <clears throat> the next two races, Brazil and Abu Dhabi, are shaping up to be uh, really good potential races. Just a handful of laps now. Thomas, of course, making some inroads on Dougie at the moment. Back now just a little bit over half a second. And just kind of like you predicted, I don't know if uh, Calzo has made a mistake or if the tires are finally, you know, with the hard tires finally becoming the quicker tire, um, has taken a ton of time out of Kelzo this lap so he's now within DRS um, see if he can make a move uh, with not if it's not this lap it'll most likely be uh, you know two laps or so yeah it looks like Kelzo does have a small ERS advantage but of course fruitful with the DRS now so yeah, it'll be awfully close if Calzo can hold on. This uh, might be one of the few battles we have for the points uh, if Thomas can't get by Dougie. Again, it feels Thomas about within half a second at the end of the DRS, but then loses a little bit of ground between those two DRS straights. Hello. Right on board here with Fruitful. He has, uh, he's closed the gap even just that much more. He's now uh, pu pu uh, pulled in about two uh, tenths in sector one. Now he's got the DRS, and now he's going to pull himself right up to the rear end of Calzo. Um, I mean, he technically doesn't really need to make the move anytime soon because we jump on back uh, board with Calzo real quick. You can kind of see the difference in ERS. Uh, Calzo is sitting on 57 percent where fruitful is uh he's down at 35 percent so do you kind of hang out for the next two laps try to build up your battery or do you just attack him now and then try to uh, uh defend it for the last handful of laps yeah and as you mentioned it it feels like 
Jay Roche probably made a mistake the last lap, and now Calzo is almost into DRS range to the racing point, just a little bit over a second behind him. So all of a sudden, the gaps from P2 to P4, and also Al's gap up front has expanded greatly now to eight, eight and a half seconds. So either, yeah, Roche seems like his mediums have started to really fall off at a fast rate at the moment. Could have a battle for both P2 and P3 here at the end. Yeah, let's see if Calzo, he's going to be just outside of, or, well, he might have gotten DRS. Um, we'll see. He did mm, not get DRS. So no, he did the not. The detection line was probably a little bit further back there before the straight. I think Calzo was within a second at the turn, but not within it for for uh, the DRS is now. Fruitful with a late dive, and Calzo locks up and allows Fruitful to go down the inside, but... Calza holds him off. Fruitful might try to go around the outside. It'll turn into the inside, but no, Calzo fence him off just enough. Fruitful, though, almost benefited from a dive and a little bit lucky that Calzo, I don't know if he thought Fruitful was further next to him than he was, but Calzo locked up hard. Yeah, it was almost like uh, Fruitful was trying to catch Calzo out. It was... Calzo probably didn't really expect the move, and then by the time he saw the move, got on the brakes a little bit harder and locked up those tires. Uh, you know, it looked like Fruitful was uh, trying to kind of just sneak one down the inside of him without Calzo knowing, but... Follow uh, Calzo through the dirty air of the S's. Uh, this is where I found the biggest trouble. Especially late in the race, you're trying to gain time, and it's just... You can just feel the car almost being pushed backwards. And it's so difficult on dead tires. Oh yeah, it's horrendous. Calzo with a decent run out of the S's now. People will have to make up some time down the backstretch. But like Calzo got a better exit as well, and that's because Calzo's been saving some ERS, and I think he used a lot of it to create a gap before the ERS section, we have a yellow flag back in sector two. Not quite sure who that's for. Uh, might have been a back marker letting Al through. I don't think so. They aren't quite a lap down yet. We've only got coming to two laps to go. Or fruitful can he steal away a podium spot I'm not sure what the podium or the penalties are as well if calzo has got any or not I know fruitful technically has the six seconds but we believe the first one can probably get taken away yeah he'll just have to send in the footage for that and there's a good chance if if the game gave him a corner cut coming into the pits then something like that would be uh could be potentially removed Looking at the ERS between the Renault and the Ferrari, they're pretty similar. They're both pretty much sitting yeah. about 50%. So at this point, it's just going to be who deploys it when and then whose tires are in better shape. And Calzo with a great exit. Now we'll have DRS behind Jay Roche in the racing point. So Roche down on some ERS as well. So both Calzo and Fruitful will catch up a little bit of ground. Calzo not close enough to make the move for second place though as we're coming to the final lap. Here in just a moment it has been a quick and mostly uneventful race especially at the front but now looking like we could have a couple of late moves for the final two podium spots. Roche, Calzo, and Fruitful all broken away by themselves in this battle for second. As Roche now picks up a three-second penalty, that's a crucial mistake for Roche. Now Calzo late on the brakes. Roche gets a terrible exit out of the final corner. Calzo will peek to the outside, now might move to the inside. 
Roche will defend the outs the inside. Calzo will try to late break. Roche holds soft to switch back. A beautiful move for him to stay up in second. Meanwhile, on the back of Calzo is fruitful. They're going to be nose to tail through the S's in sector one. And the dirty air going to have a big effect. Roche will benefit from that. Calzo had to tank his time battling with that dirty air. And Ooh. Fruitful almost got into the back of Calzo awfully close. As looking down back in the field, Jamie uh, gets passed by Lego for P11. So here we go. Really the last chance for the Calzo and Fruitful. Can they make any moves to P2? Both will have DRS. Calzo does have a little bit of a gap back to Roche. Fruitful just on the back of Calzo and no, no one unable to make a move. Calzo locks up a little bit and that gives Fruitful a run. And incredibly hard to pass through this final third sector. Yeah, it's almost impossible. I'm going to look. Nope. Dougie and Thomas are in the middle of a battle as Thomas tried to overtake Dougie. Um, but. As coming around the final corner is Al, and he will take the win. Fruitful runs wide out of the penultimate corner. I don't think he'll have time. We'll see where the penalties decide P2 through P4 is. And it is the same running order, so Roche, Calzo, and Fruitful P2 through 4. Officer Juan with a solid 5th place finish. And it looked like maybe Dougie and Thomas came together. Thomas well behind Dougie as they run, or might have just run out of gas, actually. Yeah, it looks nope, like he's... Still has fuel. Oh, it does? <laughs> See, the little and flashing Dougie... line, everybody is flashing at this point, so... Yeah. Ducky actually got off Sir Juan by six hundredths of a second with penalties. But yeah, flawless Simply... race from Altakir. He got got the overtake into turn one. Def or defended it off, squeezed him out, and really that's probably the most uh, action he had during the race. Lego will not get any points as he comes across P eleven, and Jay Ghost takes the fastest lap in P thirteen. So. No fastest lap bonus point. And I'm just looking at the chat and the votes for driver of the day coming in. Looks to be for Dougie having um, the baseline set up and still being able to pull off some decent points. It is Dougie, an impressive P5 after uh, not qualifying, not having a setup and just jumping in late. Um, so, yeah, he is our driver of the day, but of course, Altakir with the win in the Mercedes and taking over the driver's championship lead, trailed by eight points, but with a 25 to zero after Lego and incident into turn one, we'll have the 17 point uh, lead heading to Brazil and Abu Dhabi. That is a huge amount for Lego if he can, I don't think uh, he can make that up against Al. Yeah, it'll definitely be a hard one to cover. Get the uh, the podium drivers in here for interviews as soon as... Now let's see if I can get them. I'm going to have to kind of pause the, uh, for a second. Oh yeah, you might as, or I'll just give you the suggestion.
As we have two of the drivers, I'm just trying to get the last driver in for the All right, just make sure you guys have stuff set to share. I'm sure most of it is by now. We'll start here in a second. Right. Well, I'm not sure if the other driver's going to join, so we can we can probably go ahead and start with our post-race uh, interviews with uh, our. We'll start with second place. We'll start with uh, Jake. Um, pretty uh, pretty boring race after the uh, the pit stops in lap one. I'm just curious. Oh, did you see Kelsey anything? In oh, Kelso has joined. Well. I'm still going to continue with you, as I've already started questioning. <laughs> uh, did you uh, see anything that, you know, into turn one that may have cost what happened to the Lego? Um, I believe I, I, I was in a party with Lego at the time. He said that Raikkonen touched. Yeah, what I uh, what I saw from my com is that uh, Raikkonen just touched him on the rear and he spun it out. Yeah. Ah. I think uh, Raikkonen, Raikkonen touched Juan, and then Juan touched Raikkonen, and then Raikkonen hit Lego. Oh, yeah, so it was just, just like a, a effect, really. Yeah, I'm not constant. sure if there was anything bad. It'll probably be a racing incident, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm right. not sure who's, who's at fault really. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, you guys kind of just the whole race uh, between P2, well, is. Um, Calzo, yourself, and uh, Fruitful, who bit of a weird strategy call. Uh, I'm assuming the game probably threw him on the wrong tire. Um, yeah, you guys, pretty. it was pretty boring up until the end, as then you guys all came back together. was, you know, tire-wise, was being on the medium tire an advantage over the hard at the end, or was it pretty much uh, just equal? I would say advantage, but the problem was... That I had a really poor start, so obviously Al and Fruitful got me off the line. So from there it was quite difficult. Fruitful, I had the pace over him, but the dirty air was just a bit too much to handle, which is what made me fall back so far. So what I did was in the end, I just kind of let Fruit be where he was, and I, I knew Al at that point Al was just going to go. Like there was nothing really a lot I could do, and so I did. I pit lap nine is a bit early to pit on mediums. You can go to about eleven. But if you the undercut is quite massive, so yeah, I mean it was it was a tricky race. I definitely had if I never got held up by uh, fruit at the start, I, I believe I could have challenged out. But once you get clean air, you're pretty much gone into the distance. So it's fair play to Al really, but there's not really a lot you can do at the end of the day. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I just the dirty air is absolutely horrendous around this track. It makes it nearly impossible to get by guys. But other than that, great race from you. Um, thank you for joining. No problem. Alright, All right. and we'll go, we'll skip backwards. We're going to go to uh, P3 as Kelzo joined us a little bit later. Um, Kelzo, how was, uh, how was your race? It was, for us, obviously, there wasn't a whole lot that really, really went went down until the end of the race. But well, what do you, what's your take from tonight's race? Um... I didn't have a great qualifying, I think I only had one run in that I actually got in in the end. The start of the race, I was panicking because I, I went to the inside, but I didn't go all the way. And I went up in a car up the inside and a car up my outside as well. I managed to get through that and just kind of just got stuck by an officer one. And then he started to catch uh, Jake towards the end of the, synth, of the sauce. So I saw that it was an opportunity to go for an undercut here. Undercutted uh, uh, Officer 1 and Fruitful in the end. And then I didn't realise till halfway through back on him that yeah, he was on the hard tyres. So I didn't even know that until the end of the race. And then I started worrying because his, his pace started ramping up quite quickly. And uh, 
Yeah, it was it was hard to keep behind me towards the end, but I just got enough in the traction to keep him behind. And I thought I could have got Jake, but I made a mistake on the last lap through the S's, and I can't just drop too far back. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the you know, the move of the the race pass wise is your call to do the undercut when you were you know stuck behind the uh, officer Juan. Um, you jumped him quite tremendously and there was a huge there was about a three second gap to the cars ahead of officer Juan before you pitted and then uh you pulled yourself right up into that group so it was a great strategy call from you and a very fun race to watch when it came to the uh the different tire strategy at the end so uh good race for you thanks for joining us as well no problem. and p1 mr al -Takir, um who has now taking his championship point uh you know you're taking yeah. it back to the top um yeah I'm finally yeah i'm sure you're you're happy to, and i'm sure you're the competitive person that you are the nature uh, that you like to do things um we're probably hoping for probably a little bit of a battle for tonight's race but after you saw the incident into turn one did you just say all right here's my chance pull away or uh, were you thinking no, that I, you would have a battle after that? Actually, I knew that uh, I had a really good tire management uh, in this track. I was just, I could manage the tires a lot better than the guys, than the guys uh, behind. But I don't, I didn't knew if I was going to have uh, so much pace or if race was going to be tight between us. But in the moment I saw that uh, I was opening the gap and as tires were wearing out, I was going faster and faster compared to them. I decided to beat uh, two laps earlier than the ideal strategy, knowing that probably they were gonna go, they were gonna be on finished tires toward the end, and it actually worked really fine for me. So, yeah, really happy with it. But actually, until you are not racing, you don't have anything planned. Yeah, it was a great race from you. Um, I know we we kind of brought it up on chat or during the stream um, tonight that. Earlier in the day, you were saying in the chat that you're having issues with tire deg. Um, did that just the overcast just so you know help that situation, or, no, or did no. you just figure it, it was, out? Uh, no, I just figured out uh, half hour before the race how to manage the tires, how to make. Uh, I did a couple of setup changes. Uh, I managed to do a very good setup for this track, and it was just key to keep the tires just on the right temperature and without wearing them out. Yeah, well, that's a great call then for you, and then when it comes to uh, what you did to this setup, um, also a great win for you, uh, as you're going to open up a little bit of a gap going into Brazil, um, do you expect yes. the fight to continue, or you, you know, pace-wise, how do you feel around Brazil and say even Abu Dhabi? Uh, I don't know, mate. I really thought that the... That, uh... Circuit of the Americas was gonna be a horrible race because, for me because last year I didn't have any pace at all compared to Lego, so I was expecting the same this year. But you never know. Uh, until we don't do the qualifying and the race, I won't be able to say I'm fast or not. Right. I will Absolutely. try to train a bit and be the fastest possible in Brazil and Abu Dhabi. But well, we look forward more. to next week at Brazil. The battle will continue, I'm sure, from there. Um, thank you for uh, yeah. joining us and a, a great win tonight. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, battle. Oh, go oh, ahead, Perry. Yep. That, that'll wrap things up here for Tier 1 at Circuit of the Americas. Al, of course, with the win. And driver of the day being Dougie, finishing back in P5. We'll catch you next Wednesday for Tier 1 around Interlagos. Of course, uh, contest of speed back next week with Tier 3 on Monday night, 10 p.m. UK time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we'll hope to see you all there. Uh, from Perry the Dog 6, Mitch 791, everybody here at Contest of Speed signing off saying, have a.